So this is Key West, Florida, and our story today takes us to this place, the Key West Cemetery. This is maybe one of the most famous cemeteries in the country, let alone in the state of Florida. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my strange adventures. So come with me as I explore the Key West Cemetery and share the stories that are behind a lot of these tombstones. So we begin with this grave right here. These are the Griffins. They were a husband and wife team that actually died on the same day. And the reason why they died on the same day is the Griffins were a murder-suicide pact. Austin Griffin murdered his wife, Tina, and then committed suicide. And that's why these two have the same death day. This is particularly grim because in 1907, murder-suicides really weren't all that common. So this, Again, is Austin and Tina Griffin, a husband and wife murder suicide. And they are buried right here. So here we have Sophronia Bradley Hall, born in 1880, died in 1945. She was the wife of Guy Morell Bradley. And here on this historical marker is an egret. And the reason why is her husband, Guy Bradley, was murdered by poachers off of Flamingo, Florida on July 8th, 1905. And his death sparked the rapid growth of the Audubon movement in America. And he was a game warden who was trying to protect the egrets of the Everglades because people would come and kill the egrets for these tail feathers to be used in fashion for hats. And the egrets were on the verge of extinction. And Guy Bradley was the one who tried to stop it. And he was murdered by the poachers because of it. But his death sparked the Audubon movement in America and eventually saved and protected the egrets from extinction. All right, so look at this one in particular, Richard Moore Kemp. And for those of you who are watching my other channel, Reptile Adventures, you know exactly why Richard Kemp means a lot to me. Richard Kemp is the one who first described a species of sea turtle, which was named after him, called the Kemp's Ridley Sea Turtle, Lepidocelli's Kempi. This is the man that described that sea turtle for science. He was born in 1825 and he died in 1908. And look at that. We've got a sea turtle engraved on his tombstone here. This is very, very cool. And over here on Gladys's tombstone, we have one of the most meticulously carved angels in the entire cemetery. Look at that. She has a little lily in her hand. It really doesn't say anything on her gravestone, somebody left some milk there that's probably significant, but it just says Bates down here, Gladys up here, and this really amazing angel. All right, so here we have some above ground graves, but look at this. For some reason that I'm not too sure about, uh, there's a Cessna plane and a weather vane on top of this stack of graves here. That's uh, pretty interesting. All right, this one is kind of interesting. This one says Pie Dad on it. But look at how this is. It's a casket, like at an angle up on these pillars. And it says something in Latin down below, which I don't speak Latin, so there that is. PLF de Ayala, born Ayala, maybe. Born in Cuba, 1859, died in Key West, 1891. Pi Dad was actually a woman, and her grandfather wrote the Cuban National Anthem. But in everything that I've just read, nothing explains this unique tombstone, but it's very interesting that her grandfather wrote the Cuban National Anthem. But there's no explanation as to why that is a casket that is propped up like that. Is there somebody in there? Is there somebody buried below and that's just decorative? I don't know. Comment below, let me know what you think. Is there actually somebody buried in the upper casket? Or is that just a grave marker that's kind of interesting? And Pi Dad is actually buried down below. Comment below and let me know what you think about that. That is a very strange tombstone. And then we get to this mausoleum, which is probably the most famous part of Key West Cemetery. Because right over here, BP Roberts, otherwise known as Pearl, 
who was born on May 17, 1929 and died on June 18, 1979, she was a hypochondriac. She was always complaining that she was sick. And in 1979, nobody took her seriously and she died from whatever ailment she died from. And that led us to the epitaph, I told you I was sick. Probably the most famous grave here in this cemetery. But up here we have Gloria Russell, who was born on May 22nd, 1926, and died on December 27th, 2000. Her epitaph reads, I'm just resting my eyes. Pearl Roberts and Gloria Russell are two of the most popular grave sites here at the Key West Cemetery. Such an amazing final resting place. And look at this little guy right here. In the keystone above the door, it looks like there's a guy with a mohawk. Not sure if that was the original intent, but yeah, there's a, there's a, there's a punk rocker right on the keystone, right on the door of this incredible mausoleum. This is what makes Key West Cemetery so unique. Look at this, in memory of Thomas Romer, born in Nassau, 1783 and lived for 108 years until 1891. A privateersman in the War of 1812. A good citizen for 65 years. So 65 of his 108 years, he was a good citizen. I wonder what he was for the uh, rest of the years. Look at this plot here. This is really cool. We've got this brick house mausoleum here. And this is for Edna Mitchell who was born in 1893 and died in 1942. Poor woman never found out how World War II ended. And over here, we have John Mitchell, who was born in 1885 and died in 1929, April 10th. So he died before the stock market crash, but wow, and look at this. In memory of the sons of John and Edna Mitchell. That is really nice. That's very cool. This is what I love about touring cemeteries, is just the stories of the families that continue on, but remember those that have passed on, and in this case, in such a unique way. So I'm not sure what the story is here, but here we have a broken angel who is carrying her own head. and the remnants of her broken wings lay on the ground beneath her. And if this tombstone here isn't a rendition of Key West, Florida, I don't know what is. This is a huge conch shell, and this is for Sir Peter Anderson, who was born January 12th, 1947, died on July 16th, 2014. He was the Secretary General of the Conch Republic, and he had fun. I can't love this enough. Here is the flag of the Conch Republic. And if you don't know the story of the Conch Republic, Key West wanted to secede from the United States and form their own independent republic called the Conch Republic. The US government, of course, uh, said, that's not a good idea, don't do that. But people here in Key West, they still believe in the Conch Republic as its own republic. And Sir Peter Anderson here was the Secretary General of the Conch Republic. That is just fantastic. Just think about how different things would be around here if the Conch Republic actually gained independence from the United States. Kind of interesting to think about, but that is just absolutely fantastic. I love that one. Born in 1940, Columbus, Ohio, Norm Taylor, Key West, Captain, what does that say? Outrageous? So you're supposed to put, see the... Oh yeah. I'm going to put pennies on the bike. I'll give it a dime. All right, so I don't know that much about Key West personalities, history, people, but people who live here in Key West obviously knew and revered and adored Norm Taylor. If you guys know who Norm Taylor was, please comment below and let me know. But look at this. People have put pennies around the edge of his tombstone there. But look at this. People are putting these beads all over this really cool kind of uh, fairy that tops off his tombstone there. That's actually really cool. So again, if anybody knows who Norm Taylor is, please comment below and let me know. And here's a tombstone that's kind of near and dear to my heart. We've got a sailboat on top and the epitaph reads, the adventure continues. Captain Bob, Robert James Decker, 
who was born on December 2nd, 1937, and died on April 30th, 2015. But that the adventure continues is what really gets me. Because I don't really believe that death is the ending. I, I will fully admit that I am a skeptic when it comes to the whole life after death thing. There's a great part of me that believes that dead is dead. You're just done. You're over. You cease to exist. And your tombstone, in a place like this, is all that you leave behind. But I don't know that I'm right. And if I'm not right, I would assume that the afterlife would be a brand new adventure. The continuance of an existence. And Captain Bob, with his tombstone that says the adventure continues, I think Captain Bob may have been onto something. So guys, as always, thanks for watching, and be sure to hit that subscribe button, and when you do, hit that bell so you do not miss a strange upload. Comment below and give this video a like, and until the next strange adventure from wherever that may take me, embrace your strange and rattle on.